Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be looking at um, a piece inspired by the wonderful Natalie May who goes by Happy Dax on Instagram and basically it's called How to Use Everything in the Kitchen Sink because so I used everything in the kitchen sink on this page. So Natalie runs some free art journaling classes on her um, I was going to say Instagram, on her Facebook page, um, Natalie May Scrapbooking. Um, so I'll leave the links for those below. Um, but she also has her own shop. So if you're in Australia, please check it out because she stocks the most amazing stuff. And um, <clears throat> my bank account hates her, but I love her because <laughs> she just brings in absolutely everything. So I'm just starting off the way I usually do on a lot of my pages with some collage in the background. And these collage pieces are from Scrap FX, which again are available through Natalie's shop. Um, so you can purchase them there. But just, you know, lots of different shapes and shades on the page to make it inter interesting. And just to add something in the background. And then going in with some acrylic paints, so that was magenta, and then rubbing it off through a stencil. I think that's an Art by Mylene stencil. So going in and just playing around with some different colours. So um, Natalie did use a lot of yellow on her page. I forced myself to use some too. I quite like the contrast in it. I do find um, I was a, well, I was a little bit heavy-handed with it. I was using a different um, yellow than I usually have. I'm trying to use up some of my old paints, and I squeezed out a little bit too much. So there's quite a lot of yellow happening there. And then I'm going in with turquoise. So I find in a lot of my artwork. Particularly when I'm doing this technique, I tend to go, these are my go-to colours. Um, and I think it's because they're a play on primary colours. So it's not, you know, your traditional red, blue and yellow. But it's more the print making colours of um, cyan, magenta and yellow. And I find to me they're a little bit more pleasing on the eye. It's not quite as dark and dominating than having a, a true red and a true blue on the page. Once I've done that, I am going in with some stamps and I was actually using some bubble wrap to create my patterns in the background. So this technique was taken from Natalie and it's something I have not tried before, which is why I was really interested to try it on this page, which was actually using my gel print straight into my journal. Um, and I really loved how it worked. I have a few different um, gel plates and I tend to use my big one a lot when I'm printing but I really need to start using my little one because by having a smaller um, plate I could actually get it into my book and you can see just sort of by printing over pressing onto the page in different places I was able to you know create those patterns and layers which is what gel printing is all about is creating those layers I also used my um, brayer which had you know additional paint on it to go around the edges to darken them up a little bit which I really liked too. Now I'm going in this is another new Art by Mylene stencil um, and I really like sort of the the doodly edges and loose um, flowers on it. I, while I was sort of following along kind of with what Natalie was doing I was kind of going off my own tangent because <laughs> I was really having fun with these um, flowers and a stencil. So it's kind of using the same formula I do in some of my other pages where I've got a really really busy background, lots of pattern and layer happening. So I'm using stenciling some white over the top to try and calm it down a little bit, try and give it a little bit of a focus um, to um, blend it sort of all in together um, so it's not quite as segmented I suppose as it looked before. I had a little bit of paint left so I put that into my junk journal. Now I've um, again I think Natalie did some drips and splatters so I decided I was going to do some drips and splatters. I thought gold would look really good on the page um, but I was really struggling to get it drippy. So you can see I'm using a few different paint brushes and in the end I, I end up using my favorite paint brush for splatters which is the fan brush. I'm also going in, the first um, ink was a metallic gold, the second one is a, an, an ochre colour I think and this one is indigo. 
So I, when I'm doing sort of ink down the bottom, I do tend to put out some paper towel because it does go everywhere. And I've drawn some circles at the top and sort of got it to drip down. So um, you can see where I've sort of put the gold in the, the first bit and then I've drawn some over the top. So you get the blend and I've patted off some of the ink. I've let some of the darker bits stay. Just, just have fun with it. These are all acrylic. No, I might be lying. Pigmented ink. The gold was an acrylic ink. This is a pigmented ink. So, um, but it is a drawing ink. So it is fairly permanent on your page. It's light, light fast, water resistant. So um, it works well. I also decided I didn't have enough white on the page because I'd kind of, where I had that white before, it had blended back into the background because I put the drips over it. So I decided to drop some white over the top too. So I really liked this background, really, really liked it, but it was a background. So I need to put some sort of focal image on it. Um, these are two images I got from um, Dina Wakeley. She has a supporters hub. You pay $5 a month and you get some free videos. Um, and she sometimes has um, downloads that you can, um, she gives out once a month. So you can get some extra content if that's your jam, which, you know, I'm addicted to Dina Wakeley, so it's mine. Um, and I'm doing my usual um, cheats body by um, just cutting out some book text and having those as a bodies. I'm kind of trying to work out how I want the, the bodies to go on the page. Um, with most printables that I do, I print it out, sorry, I print it out on sticker paper. I just find for me, it's a whole lot easier having sticker paper because I can just stick it straight onto the page. Um, you don't have to, obviously you can print it out on regular paper and blend it in, it really doesn't matter. And now I'm going in and painting the bodies, just again using some colours that were in the background. Now obviously I use that turquoise in the background but you can't actually see it anymore. You can see tiny little peaks of it peeping through. Um, so it's um, like doubling up the colours I suppose almost on your page. You've used them, you're not actually introducing any new colours, you're just um, alluding to the colours that are in the background. I'm also watering out my acrylics a bit so you can still see the text through it because I still want that texture of um, the, the text coming through. So once I put the bodies on, obviously I wasn't going to leave my faces white. I wasn't sure how I was going to do them and then I decided well you've got time might as well paint. So I got out my favourite colours and I'm painting them in. So I've got lots of tutorials on how I do these sort of face paintings on my channel. But basically I choose three or four colours. Um, so I'm using again those three colours, those primary colours um, as my base. I, I really like how they look. Um, I use the white, sorry, I use the yellow as my lightest colour, my highlight colour. I use the magenta as my mid-tone colour and I use the blue as my deepest colour. Um, it looks really alien-esque but I find, for me, this is a really great way of me being able to put shadows and highlights on my page. If I tried to do this as skin tone colours, for me personally, I would struggle because I, I would find it too difficult to make them look different. Um, by having three completely separate colours, I can map where they go really, really easily and it looks crazy to me, but that's okay, I don't mind. The final thing I'm doing is putting on some night and blending it in and that gives me really strong shadows on my page. Now, it looks really weird at the moment. It does end up looking better. Um, put some trust in it, it's all good. Um, once you've sort of finished it off and put in the details, so everything, this is the midway point, it doesn't have the detail in it yet. Once you start adding some black drawing over the top again, you suddenly get back all that Christmas and line again that gives you those faces popping out properly. I'm just going in now and putting some stenciling because I had some paint left on my um, board. I hate having paint left on my board so you know why not use it up. This uh, script stamp or uh, script stencil from Stencil Girl and again just using those 
same colours, so I've used night and turquoise on both of those bodies, but by reversing them you get that repetitive nature, but they're the same, same, but different. So um, you can use everything. So now I'm going in and putting in the Stabilo Oil Pencil. One of the problems with the... Um, well, not a problem, sorry, but you'll see the difference now as I put in these eyes. As soon as you put the eyes in to a figure, they suddenly make sense. When you don't have the eyes in, they look odd, they look alien-esque. As soon as you put the whites of the eyes in and the little catch-alls, suddenly it, our eyes read that as a face. Um, so if you are panicking going, oh, this does not look right, fix up your eyes. Some artists you will find will always do the eyes first on their faces so it looks normal to them as they're painting them. I tend to leave the eyes to the end because it's fine detail work and I'm not very detail oriented so um, I'm likely to paint over it and so on that's why I tend to leave mine to the end. Once I put my faces in I really like that now but obviously I had that big wide patch on the other page which needed something to balance it off and the way I usually balance off my pages is to put a quote or some words in it and I was doing this at a stage <laughs> um, where my body image was I was just having a real issue with body image I still am but you know I've broken myself since so I'm more concerned about that than actually worrying about what's going on which is I suppose been good for my, my body image Im issues um, but this quote really spoke to me and it says your worth is nothing to do with how you look in the mirror which is so true and it's something that I want my girls to know so it's something I need to believe myself so I find that quotes that really really speak to me if I put them into my journal if I take the time to letter them if I take the time to make art to reflect them they stick with me a little bit more um, instead of just taking a picture on Instagram and going, oh yeah, I agree with that, and then passing on. If it's something I can go back and reflect on, if it's something I've spent half an hour working on, it obviously means more to me than something I just flick through in an instant. So I decided to use white again to sort of bring that balance of black and white. There was, those pages were quite dark because I'd put so many layers on, so having some white to balance it up really helped. And you'll notice all that white stenciling I've done in the background has kind of disappeared again. I did have to do two layers of white pen um, just to get it opaque enough to actually stand out. And now I'm just going in with a thin black pen just to do a bit of shadowing on it to pop the letters out from the background a little bit. And that's the final page. So thank you very much to um, Natalie May for the inspiration. Um, please, please, please go check out her page pages she's got a whole heap of um, tutorials and stuff and please check out her shop because her shop is amazing um, particularly if you're in Australia and want stencil girl stencils she's your girl and I hope that there was something in the, the video in one of the many things that I used on that page that you thought oh, I might be able to try that on my next art journaling page so until next time bye for now